Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about creatinine test. What is serum creatinine test? This is one of the renal functionality test. Renal panel test includes estimation of many of the parameters. For instance, we have the electrolytes like the sodium, potassium, calcium, chlorides, phosphates. All these parameters are estimated within the blood. Along with these electrolytes, we have the other components like carbon dioxide, glucose are also estimated and anion gap is also estimated. Apart from these parameters, within the renal panel, one of the important tests is the blood urea nitrogen, commonly known as BUN. So all these tests are generally done in order to assess the renal functionality. But among these tests, two are more important in order to assess the renal functionality. One is the serum creatinine test and another one is the blood urea nitrogen. Both creatinine as well as urea nitrogen are the metabolic end products. These are going to be estimated within the blood and when they are elevated, it may indicate some renal dysfunctionality. So today in this video, we are going to discuss about serum creatinine test. When the serum creatinine levels are elevated, Creatinine is one of the mediator that is excreted by the renal system. So elevated levels of serum creatinine may indicate some renal dysfunction. This renal dysfunction is generally associated with decreased GFR glomerular filtration rate. So in such conditions serum creatinine levels are elevated. Under the normal function of the renal system we cannot observe the elevated levels of serum creatinine. But in few of the disease conditions like the diabetes where the uncontrolled glucose levels may produce diabetic nephropathy after a prolonged period. Similarly, if you have the conditions like the severe hypertension, if a patient is having the severe hypertension for several years, again it may lead to the increased renal perfusion pressure and increased workload to the renal system which may produce some dysfunction in the renal functionality. Similarly, by use of nephrotoxic drugs, if you have the NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs produce the nephrotoxicity. Similarly, if you have the immunosuppressants like the cyclosporine, tacrolimus, they can also produce the nephrotoxicity. And anti-cancer agents like the cisplatin, antifungal agents like amphotericin B, all these drugs can produce the nephrotoxicity. They can reduce the renal function, which may result in the increased serum creatinine levels. And not only these conditions, Sometimes we have the viral infections may also produce a renal dysfunction. For example, in the COVID-19, the patients may have multi-organ failure where there may be a damage to the renal system resulting in the renal dysfunction. So all these conditions may produce a renal dysfunctionality where the serum creatinine levels are excessively elevated. But sometimes we can also observe elevated levels of serum creatinine because of any modification in the diet. For instance, a high protein diet may also elevate the serum creatinine levels due to high intake of the protein which is converted into creatine. Apart from this high protein diet, all other conditions which are associated with elevated levels of serum creatine may indicate renal dysfunction in the patients. And in patients who are having CKD, chronic kidney disease, again we can observe decreased renal functionality. In such conditions, serum creatine levels are elevated. So in such patients, we can observe few of the symptoms like swelling of abdomen, face, wrist, ankle swelling, which indicates that renal system is not able to excrete the large volumes of the body fluids, which results in the accumulation of body fluids and swelling in the patients. But generally, this swelling can also be observed in cardiovascular disorders like the heart failure. But when the swelling is present along with other symptoms like foamy urine, low volume of urine as well as burning during the urination, some back pain particularly nearer to the kidney along with other symptoms like poor appetite, fatigue, some lack of energy, difficulty in sleeping as well as some lack of concentration. Any of these symptoms are associated along with few of the risk factors like diabetes, severe hypertension or prolonged use of nephrotoxic drugs or 
post viral infections in such conditions serum creatine test is done in order to assess the renal functionality in the patients reduced levels of serum creatine levels sometimes we can also observe a low levels of serum creatine and this may indicate few of the conditions like wasting disease wasting is one of the condition where there is a loss of muscle mass when the muscle activity is going to be reduced the serum creatine levels are also reduced in few of the patients wasting disease can be observed resulting in the excessive weight loss for instance in the hiv patients loss of muscle mass can be observed which results in the reduced levels of serum creatinine similarly if you have the muscle disorders like myasthenia gravis myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune disorder where the auto antibodies are going to be produced which will damage the muscle fibers of the same host resulting in the loss of muscle mass again in such conditions the serum creatinine levels are reduced similarly in the pregnancy where there is a reduced protein levels and even in the malnutrition in all these conditions the serum creatinine levels are reduced which may indicate a reduced muscle activity or associated muscle disorder but an elevated levels of serum creatinine may indicate renal dysfunction which is more important clinically now let us see what is creatinine so this is the structure of creatinine here we can observe the suffix which is made up of in ine we should not confuse creatinine with another component creatine this is the structure of creatine if we carefully observe both of these components are having some structural similarity within the structure of creatine if we close the ring at these two positions it can be converted into creatinine so creatinine is the degradation product coming from creatine now in order to assess the renal functionality we are going to estimate the serum creatinine levels but we are not estimating the creatine then what is the role of creatine so this creatine is going to be released from the liver as well as pancreas as well as kidneys from these creatine is going to be released which acts as a carrier for phosphate molecules one of the important role of creatine is in the muscle contraction where it supplies the phosphate molecules responsible for the supply of energy within the mitochondria adp molecules are going to be converted into atp molecules by phosphorylation but these atp molecules are not transported directly to the muscle fibers here creatine acts as a carrier so this is the creatine this is not the creatinine now this creatine can bind to these atp molecules such that it can act as a carrier here the phosphorylation of the creatine is mediated by one of the enzyme ck creatine kinase once it is bound the phosphate group is going to be transported to the creatine such that it can release the adp molecules along with release of phosphocreatine so phosphocreatine is the phosphorylated form of the creatine in this way creatine can be converted to phosphocreatine which acts as a high energy source now this phosphocreatine can act on its targets one of the important target is the myofibrils now this phosphocreatine can interact with its muscle fibers at the same time adp molecules are converted into atp molecules and this reaction is mediated by one of the enzyme ck creatine kinase so this is the enzyme which is responsible for the phosphorylation of the adp to atp where phosphocreatine is converted into again creatine similarly and the target is the sarcoplasmic reticulum which is equipped with few of the ion channels now again this phosphocreatine can interact with these ion channels where adp molecules can be converted into atp molecules now by phosphorylation of these ion channels calcium can enter into the sarcoplasmic reticulum where it is going to be stored in this way phosphocreatine plays an important role in muscle contraction as well as increased entry of calcium into the sarcoplasmic reticulum but during this muscle activity some of the creatine can be converted into creatinine which is the end product of the creatine so now by estimating this creatine levels we can estimate the renal functionality interestingly the elevated levels of creatine are not associated with the muscle functionality they are mainly associated with renal functionality because creatine is mainly excreted by renal system 
So any elevated levels of creatine may indicate some dysfunction in the renal system. At the glomerulus, the incoming arteries are the efferent arterioles and outgoing arterioles are efferent arterioles. Now few of the metabolic end products like creatinine can be excreted through the renal system. So here creatine molecule can undergo glomerular filtration and it can enter into the renal tubules where it is excreted along with the urine. One of the interesting point is that creatinine undergoes 100% glomerular filtration and it is not significantly reabsorbed. So excretion of creatinine indicates renal functionality. In this way creatinine molecules are mainly excreted by glomerular filtration. That's why creatine clearance test can also be done in order to estimate the GFR glomerular filtration rate. Since the clearance of creatine mainly depends on the glomerular filtration, creatine clearance can indicate the rate of glomerular filtration. But estimation of the creatine clearance is somewhat tedious process compared with the estimation of serum creatine. Because in this test we have to collect both blood sample as well as the urine sample and urine sample should be collected up to 24 hours. On the other hand, the creatine within the serum can be estimated by serum creatine test which can also assess the GFR, but this is called as EGFR, Estimated Glomerular Filtration Rate, where the serum creatine levels can be used to estimate the EGFR. In this calculation, various factors like age, gender of the patient, as well as correction factors are applied in order to estimate approximate glomerular filtration rate of the patient. In this way, serum creatine test is useful in estimation of the GFR, as well as in order to assess the renal functionality. But generally the elevated levels of serum creatine test is correlated with elevated levels of blood urea nitrogen which indicates a significant renal dysfunction. What are the normal serum creatine levels? As we have discussed earlier, the serum creatine levels are variable with age of the patient as well as gender of the patient. So these normal values can be defined based on the age as well as gender of the patient. So we can define the values for men as well as women. In the adult people with age from 18 to 60 years, the normal values in the men are variable from 0.9 to 1.3 milligram per deciliter. Whereas in the women, they are variable from 0.6 to 1.1 milligram per deciliter. Here the units are expressed in terms of milligram per deciliter, but they can also be expressed in terms of micromoles per liter. But this is one of the common presentation by many of the laboratories. Similarly, in the patients who are having age greater than 60 years, the normal values for men are varying from 0.8 to 1.3 milligram per deciliter. And for women, they are variable from 0.6 to 1.2 milligram per deciliter. In this way, serum creatine levels are variable with the age of the patient as well as gender of the patient. But by determining the serum creatine levels, we can estimate the renal functionality. Along with elevated levels of blood urea nitrogen, these serum creatine levels, when they are elevated, they may indicate some renal dysfunction. Particularly in the patients who are having chronic diabetes, severe hypertension, or chronic use of nephrotoxic drugs, or recent viral infections. In all these conditions, the creatine levels may be elevated, which indicates some renal dysfunction and low levels of serum creatine may indicate some muscle disorders or wasting disease which indicates the low protein as well as muscle mass present in the patient. So that's about the serum creatine test. In our next video we will come with another diagnostic test. So that's for today. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.